Well, it's time for another toy haul video. I wasn't really sure that I was going to be getting one of these uh, done by the end of the year, so this is going to be officially the last toy haul for 2018. Uh, so I got a bunch of stuff that's just sort of piled up and a bunch of stuff that's come recently. And then my wife, in typical fashion, kind of did the thing she always does, and she can't keep secrets. She just cannot stop giving my giving me gifts early. So we basically just did Christmas early for each other, and I have all the stuff that she got me. And she did some pretty interesting gifts because she normally doesn't do toys for me just because of the fact that, you know, I pretty much just buy what I want when I want it. And... She decided to get some stuff that I've just held off on for a while and really surprised me. So we'll take a look at just, you know, a bunch of random stuff, really. A lot of a lot of interesting stuff, some stuff that I normally wouldn't normally wouldn't buy either. So we're gonna start off with the one Star Wars item here. Uh, so we've got the Rogue One vintage collection, the uh, Imperial tank. So this is the three and three-quarter inch TBC tank that was like 30-ish bucks on Amazon and then Best Buy and Walmart. So it's normally $80. And I, I knew that from the get-go, 80 bucks was not going to fly. There was no way I was going to buy that. So I bided my time for once, and it paid off. So I got this guy. I still don't know if I really, really needed to buy this. But at the same time, I couldn't resist. We have got the most recent U.S. release for Dragon Ball Z. Uh, we've got Gotenks here. I think people are already getting Krillin overseas, so I've seen some photos already. So, uh, you know, as usual, I'm kind of behind on this. So we've got uh, Gotenks here. He looks pretty cool. I'm more excited about those ghosts uh, or, or that ghost than pretty much anything else in there. Uh, let's see. We've got a new... Well, a new old Predator, and this guy was complete. This is the Lava Planet Predator from Series 10, so 2013. This is one of the Kenner homage figures, and I was getting ready to start the review for this guy, so you know, I'd done a lot of the intro packaging and stuff, and then I tore him out, and then I realized I had all this stuff, so we're backtracking a bit prior to the review. So we've got this guy here. He is complete, but he only has one accessory because he was in the package. But this is one that I've wanted for a while, and I found him for basically retail price. So I finally pulled the trigger thanks to an eBay coupon, so that was pretty cool. Uh, and I really just dig just dig the deco on this guy. It really looks fantastic. And I loved the Kenner figures when I was a kid. I've still got I've still got this guy floating around somewhere in a tote or something somewhere. Uh, we've got this kind of uh, random one. So this is the 2012 Ninja Turtles line from Playmates. This is Muckman, and this figure uh, is a bit of an oddball rarity because he kind of disappeared from store shelves. Apparently there was a bit of a backlash surrounding this character in some fashion. So he was really, really, really stupid expensive for a long time. I've actually gotten one. I've got one that's more mint on card than this um, that I've just held on to. I never opened it because I didn't get too crazy into this line. But I kept him on card because he just looked cool. And then these popped up on Amazon for like $9. So I grabbed one. Card is just kind of beat to hell. But... Uh, I can open this one and I'll open him up because it's a really gnarly looking figure and I'm a big fan of the original one. So this one's, uh, that's pretty exciting because, I mean, he was selling for 50, 60, 70 bucks in some cases, which is just really crazy because the figure's great, but he, he ain't that great. Uh, let's see, we've got a Motu Classics figure. So one of the very, very few that I didn't have, uh, King He-Man. So we've got him here. Got him loose uh, for a steal, I think. And, uh, you know, because I open them all anyway, so there's no reason to get them carded. I'm not going to keep the packaging for classics. I never have. So we've got King He-Man here. Really, you know, interesting figure from the comic books. The more recent comic books. I think it's a pretty decent figure, though. I love the uh, the 2000X battered and beaten power sword. That's, that's really cool. So we've got that guy. We've got... This one's a bit of an oddball thing. So this is the Figma Nendoroid Genji figure from Overwatch. I play Overwatch a lot. It's one of the few games that I constantly play just because it's easy for me to play it with the kiddo running around. Uh, so we've got this. I found him on clearance at Target for 15 bucks. Normally I don't buy these. I've never even touched a Nendoroid uh, out of the package. So I just got him just to see what he was like. And it looks pretty cool. He's got his uh, ultimate effect pieces in there. There's a lot of stuff in here. It looks pretty neat. So it's not going to be a gateway drug of any kind because I don't really care too much for the style. But... I know Figma stuff, so I'm sure it, I'm sure it's fine. It looks pretty cool. Genji's not even close to my favorite character either, so this isn't gonna pull me in. But for 15 bucks, I figured you know, let's try it, take a stab at it, and see what the, just see what they're like. It's a fun, uh, fun little jaunt into into Nendroids. So let's see what else do we have? We have got some uh, Mythic Legions, if you can believe that. We have got a couple older ones. 
So we've got uh, Baron Voligar here. So he's the uh, the original vampire in the line. He is, if you've seen my Advent of Decay reviews, the Lucretia vampire, he is her father. He's the originator of vampires. And then she's the leader of the faction. So we've got him, and I just think he's just fantastic. He's also one of the figures that comes with one of the big battle standards as well. Uh, everything about this figure just oozes cool factor for me personally. And then we've got... Gorgo Aetherblade. This is one of the sort of faction leaders. So he's the leader of the, what is it? The Legion of Aerithur. So the big evil demon faction in the, in the mythos of Mythic Legions. So these, this guy's pretty cool. I just dig his color scheme. Everything about it is just really cool. He's got big antlers. Uh, this is one of the 1.0 figures. Uh, Voligar was Covenant of Shadow, I believe. So neither of them are new, and they both go for relatively stupid prices. Uh, but I got these for a pretty good steal. Well, not a steal, but not a bad deal either. Thanks to some uh, friends on Facebook groups. And then I've got another loose Mythic Legion. So we've got one of the 1.0 Skeleton Legion Builders here. So this is just, you know, a standard skeleton, but he's on the older style single... Uh, single body piece buck, so there's no new added torso articulation like the 2.0 Skeleton Legion Builders I showed recently. So this guy's the original. He comes with a whole mess of accessories, big axe, sword, whole deal. But he's got a more full set of armor. You can't, uh, he's not as thin. He's more of a standard humanoid rather than these, these kind of scrawnier bucks that they've got with the new line. But this guy's pretty sweet. He's actually being re-released with the All-Stars wave that's coming in a couple months. So if you're interested in one of these, you will be able to, you might be able to get one. I'm assuming they're going to have an in-stock sale at some point as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's more stuff in that box we'll take a look at in a second. We have got, this is the, the stuff that uh, I would normally have never bought. I've never bought anything from this particular line. I don't even really have much from this company in general. So we've got the Diamond Select real Ghostbusters figures. This is wave one. There's three figures in this particular wave. So we've got Winston and these things come, I hate the packaging for Select, I'm gonna say it right now. I think it's way too big. There's so much empty space in here. That said, these guys come with enormous pieces because they build the firehouse. So I understand why, I just don't really care for it. There's no way that I would ever keep something like this sealed. Plus, I'm a huge real Ghostbusters fan, so that's really what drew me to these. I'm not the hugest Ghostbusters fan in the world. Don't get me wrong, I love the movies. But when I, when I think about what I love the most about Ghostbusters, it was always the cartoon. Uh, it was always the cartoon. I'm not really sure why, it just always was. So, you know, I had the Kenner figures, I still have a lot of those. But when I saw these, I knew I had to get them. And Big Bad Toy Store got them in recently. I mean, I got these to add them filming today, uh, which is Saturday. And they they shipped them out a couple days ago. So you can probably get them now. I imagine that they would have them in stock too. So they're just now hitting. I know they've been hitting comic book shops because they're a diamond products, so they go to comic book stops, shops really early. But these guys look really fantastic, so I'm very interested to take a look. They do have some odd, odd looking hip articulation here, so we're definitely going to review them. But just to look at them, I mean, like these guys look like they jumped out of the out of the TV. So we got Winston for me to just keep babbling on and on. Uh, we've got Slimer, and Slimer's kind of weird because he, you know, he's really just these three pieces up here. I think, pretty sure that's it. And then there's a ton of the fire station in there. So you're, I mean, it really just comes down to what you're, what you're wanting out of this one. Because I'm not going to be building the fire station. I'm curious if people out there who don't want these, these figures want my parts because I don't want them. And I certainly don't want to throw them away, but I also have no use for them either. I'm just in it for the figures on these guys. And then the one that I was most interested in for the entire line is uh, Egon. Egon was always my favorite and I love his goofy look in the cartoon. and I love his hairstyle. I think it's just ridiculous and wild. The figure, the, the characters all share the same same body or the same buck, uh, as far as I can tell. I think they have little embellishments that are going to be different, and they have a bunch of accessories. We've got proton packs, the whole the whole deal. So I mean, it's really like everything that you could think of is here, and uh, they look pretty expertly crafted. I'm very very excited to take a look at these. I'm curious how long it's going to take me to get to them. Uh, Christmas stuff is really throwing a wrench into my ability to do stuff in the toy room right now. But we've got the stuff that my wife got me. So uh, she got me a bunch of stuff. Most of it's not toy related. Uh, most of it's not toy related. But the big stuff, the big stuff was toy related. So she got me a few, a few actual toys. 
And then she got me something that was kind of tour related, which this was just, this is just an interesting gift idea in general. Like she did a really good job with this because it's just, it's a piece of toy nostalgia and history, so to speak. So she got me one of, and this is specific to me, this is one of the aisle markers from a Toys R Us store. So this is, this is a Star Wars aisle. So we've got Star Wars, Star Wars lightsabers, Star Wars figures. So whatever store this came from, I don't know. Uh, it was aisle A13. So it's likely, it's either going to go in the toy room somewhere, or what I'm actually thinking of doing is putting it outside the toy room, and it will be the sign to mark the toy room. So it'll be something in the hallway out there, down in the basement, um, to show that, you know, and maybe change these up. Take these out, because these are just pieces of paper. You know, they're just printed pieces of paper. Change them out. You know, make, make them uh, specific to the toy room, you know, have Motu or Thundercats, you know, something really nice and maybe some vinyl stuff there. Something that, that stays around, a little, little staying power. Uh, but this thing's just really cool. I don't know. It's a really, it's a, it's a smart gift idea. I think she did a, a stellar job uh, with this because that, when I saw this, like this kind of blew me away because I knew exactly what it was the, the minute I saw it. I knew where it came from and it's just, you know, it's kind of the perfect gift. She didn't pay hardly anything for it to get it. It definitely means something to me from, you know, just kind of a nostalgia, kind of stupid perspective there. So that's a really cool gift. But she got me toys. And of course, like I said, you know, she can't keep secrets. She just, one of these literally came in the mail today. I gave it to her to hide because I knew it was my present. I knew, I knew it was for me, but I didn't know what was in there. And five minutes later, she was telling me to open it. So yeah, she's just not very good at keeping, keeping this stuff. She wants me to, to open them. So she got her stuff and I got mine. So uh, it's, it's, it's well known that Thundercats is ultimately my thing. That's what I love the most. It's my favorite cartoon of all time. It's my favorite vintage toy line. It's my favorite toy line that I wish got more love and respect in the modern toy lines. Uh, but I don't have a full vintage set. I've, I've tried to complete certain figures, tried to get better figures before going after some of the figures that are just rare. So I don't have a lot of like the second wave of Thundercats. I don't have Link so I don't have Bengali, I don't have Pumira, I don't have Captain Cracker, I don't have Captain Shiner, I don't have Driller, I don't have Stinger, I don't have the really stupid rare stuff. What I've mostly concentrated on is getting figures that are really nice quality that I can still afford because Thundercat vintage figures can be absurdly expensive, more so than a ton of other lines for some reason. So she got me a few that I just kind of passed over from time to time. So the first one is uh, she got me a Pumira. This is one that, uh, I mean, it's it's kind of on the bottom of the list just because it's Pumira, and I don't really care. It doesn't have an accessory because the accessories are known to kind of just wear out because it's just a piece of string with a plastic doodad on it. So I can track one of those down pretty easily, I think. Uh, I wasn't too concerned about it, but the figure, the paint on it is nice. The action feature still works. That's the big thing for me is the action features on my figures have to work because that's the point of them. So we've got action feature working. There's no thunder pox on this one, so she doesn't have any of the spotting plastic. So she did a really good job. She did her homework. She snuck down into the toy room to make sure that I didn't have these figures. And then these are two. Uh, these are easily the best thing that she got me. These are the best things that that uh, that I've had to, as far as a haul in a while. So the Thundercats toy line had a Thundercats companions line as well. So that's where the the full size full size Snarf and Mama came from. But the figures that I always wanted and I never had as a kid, and I only got one of them recently because of my mom getting one for me, and those were the Burbles. So my mom got me uh, Rober Bill, and my wife just got me Rober, Be Ro Rober Bell and Rober Bert. So we've got the blue one and we've got the orange uh, yellow one here. And these are not exactly hard to find, but often they are just awful in the paint department or they're faded and really nasty. Uh, these are pretty solid examples. They have a little paint rub here and there. It's, it's almost impossible for that not to happen on a Thundercats figure in some cases. Finding pristine figures is really rough because LJN paint jobs weren't all that great anyway. Uh, but these these are like near perfect for what I would consider to be something that I would have paid for. So knowing what she paid for these, I think she did a really fine job. Uh, you know, I'm just surprised that she went to the effort to actually get them, make sure I didn't have them, and find the best possible ones that she could get without breaking the bank. So yeah, this is the first Thundercats Christmas I think I've had, I don't know, since the 80s maybe? But she did a fantastic job. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. 
Uh, more than I thought, I guess. And I, I got new new Mythic Legions from Admin of Decay as well. I've seen it shown some of them off in some reviews. So the Skeleton Soldier Builder, I got one of those recently. I got another Cavern Dwarf Legion Builder, and I got another Goblin Legion Builder from the in-stock sale. But you've seen those already, so there's no real point in bringing those out. Uh, but that's about it, I think. I got this sweet sweatshirt, too. Or, yeah. Merry Christmas from Eternia. So we got some Star Wars, we got some Ghostbusters, some Dragon Ball Z, more Mythic Legions, a Predator, Motu Classics, and these beautiful, beautiful robot bears. So we're going to have reviews for some of this stuff real soon. Uh, let me know what you guys have gotten recently. Let me know what toys that you guys want for Christmas or are getting for Christmas or whatever holiday that you are celebrating right now. I would love to know what you guys are getting. And, uh, you know, if any of these things you want to see reviewed before others, let me know that as well. But otherwise, I'll catch you later.